some batteries when they arrive uh, don't have uh, a connector on the end or you may wish to choose the connector type um, for example we've got a Dean's connector on this battery and on this battery we have an XT60 connector so I'm planning to put an XT60 connector on this battery and uh, the only way I can do it is by soldering this on uh, which I've, I've purchased online and uh, I also have some coloured heat shrink to go with it. So first thing I'm going to do is remove the uh, remove the heat shrink on one of them so I don't think it really matters which one you do uh, but it's important that you never let the, the two touch because you'll create a big spark and uh, you get a big flash and if you leave them together they'll get hotter and hotter and you can potentially uh, start a fire or blow the battery up it's called short a short circuit so you should never do that never allow these two wires to touch um, so I'm going to do them very carefully one at a time so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the remove the, uh, the heat shrink that's protecting the end and I'm just thinking very carefully cutting cutting it off and I'm not pressing very hard at all just enough to be able to sort of unpeel this that's it to get my fingers fingernail behind there and pull it off that's it and there's one okay and then the next thing I'm going to do is now sometimes people use use lead free solder and some people use a leaded solder so to be sure I'm going to just trim that off just struck a cup at the other side of the room and create my own solder joint which I'm using leaded so I prefer it so it gets a stronger and a better, better solder in my opinion and I'm just going to tin it There we go. So this is the positive that I'm starting on, which is on this, if you look at the XT60, there is, uh, if you just see, if it's not too blurry, it's hard to tell, but there is a positive low, a symbol on there. You can just see it there on one side. So it actually shows you. So I'm going to hold that in, these, in this hand, these little crocodile clips, as they're called. And I must always remember to put the heat shrink in first. going to position this these two together so that that copper that wire sort of should I say is inside there like so if you can just see that and uh, I can, if I tilt that over it might be easy for you to see there we go so I'm now going to apply some solder to that joint. So wetting my solder tip, soldering iron tip, and then that goes on there, and then from above onto the job, we apply solder. So it runs in and around that joint. That's it. You let that cool. Uh, it takes a while to cool some of these because they often heat up the uh, the, bra the brass contacts. And, and if they do that too much, then the contacts within the plastic moulding of the of the plug can actually uh, distort. And one way around, one way to avoid that is actually to get the opposing plug, which is this one, and plug them together, and it just holds everything correctly aligned when you uh, when you're soldering 
that gives it the extra support it needs to uh, not to move within, you know, melt the plastic and move within it, if that makes any sense. So I'm not going to do the other one until this one is safe. So I'm going to slide the heat shrink down and over the cop over the soldering. There we go, you see that's now shielded it and I'm now going to use the heat shrink gun I've got. There we go, is that working? Yep. And that is now just going to shrink that around there. So we've got no, we've got no co uh, metal contact showing apart from this side of course, uh, which I can deal with. Uh, okay. So we do the same, exactly the same process on the other one. So we'll go through again. So I'm going to trim that off. Just a very gentle scoring and just peeling back to try and reveal enough to get your finger underneath. That's it. There we go. Whip that off. And then trim off the old solder, create a new metal tip, twist it round, and put it in the helping hands and to stop the wires from. Being a nuisance. I'm going to solder it. So I've wetted the tip and come from underneath with the solder, solder it iron, and then it's from the top with the solder. And there we have it. The next thing I need to do is put, mount this, but I'm uh, a little nervous about this being on display you know these copper bits these, these brass bits uh, on this other side so I'm, on this instance I'm going to disconnect it but the other alternative is to cover them with some insulating tape uh, which will cover the terminals which is which is a good way to do it as well so now we've got to set this up so these are held ready and in there it's just just like that, so you can see that it's nicely set up there. And the same as before, I'll get the soldering iron. Ah, before we go any further, I mustn't forget to put the heat shrink on. So I've done this many, many times. So the heat shrink goes on, slide that down as far away from the heat as possible because we don't want that shrinking yet. there like that set that inside so now we're back to where we were a minute ago soldering iron so we bring the soldering iron we wet the tip just give a puff of smoke and then that goes underneath the terminal and then from above we apply the solder There we go, and that's, that's, that's grabbed it, and leave that until it's nice and cool, so we can slide the heat shrink over. I mustn't rush into uh, doing that, because the heat shrink will, before it gets into its situation, into its right place, it will start melting, or should I say shrinking. So it's still warm, yeah, it's still warm. So then we'll slide that all the way up. There we go. Oops. And then hold in place by 
apply the heat to the heat shrink. And there we have it.